Hi, Russ of Aquarium X here. Today's video is a species profile of one of the most colorful isopods readily available, Armadillidium klugei, or the clown isopod. After I introduce the species and a couple of its localities, we'll discuss its care and housing needs, and then look into its potential as a member of a bioactive cleanup crew. And finally, we'll evaluate its suitability as a hobby isopod. The clown isopod's color and pattern really have to be seen in person to be fully appreciated. As if the red skirt weren't enough, the dark gray background is liberally decorated with white and in some cases yellow polka dots. There are several localities, each with variations, and there are even a couple of morphs. Perhaps the most common locality is Armadillidium klugei Montenegro. This locality, named after the small European country from whence it hails, features white and often yellow polka dots. Armadillidium klugei Dubrovnik red face only seems to have white polka dots and has red that extends up past the skirt, in some cases completely replacing the gray background. Those are the only two varieties of the species that I have, but there are others out there. This is a medium-sized isopod comparable in size to Armadillidium vulgari. Before I get into the care requirements for this species, I'd like to give a shout out to my patrons at Patreon. It's a great way to show that you enjoy my videos, and perhaps more importantly, it makes it possible for me to keep making more. If you'd like to contribute for as little as $1 a month, please check out the link I'll put at the end of this video. And a big thanks to all of you as well. Using the affiliate links in the description, shopping at the Aquarimax website, or just watching my videos, I'll make a difference. Now, let's discuss care and housing for Armadillidium klugei. I wouldn't call this a beginner species necessarily. It's not that it's very difficult to keep, but it is a little less forgiving about environmental conditions than some others. For one, this species demands a strong moisture gradient. In other words, it absolutely needs a damp hydration station on one part of the enclosure, but it can also experience issues unless most of the rest of the enclosure, about two-thirds to three-quarters, is kept bone dry. Ideally, there should be a large hide that straddles the moist and the drier side, and then additional hides on the dry side. Providing moisture to this isopod should be done with care. Misting the enclosure and or the substrate seems to lead to problems for many isopod keepers. Wally of Supreme Gecko noticed that when he switched to trickling a little water down the side of the walls of the enclosure on the damp side, rather than misting the moss with a spray bottle, the Armadillidium klugei culture began to do much better. I have seen the same thing as have others. To be honest, I very rarely missed any isopod enclosures. I just trickle the water against the enclosure wall on the damp side. Seems to work well. Armadillidium klugei also needs a good amount of ventilation. I recommend especially some cross ventilation on the sides of the enclosure, as well as some ventilation holes on the lid of the enclosure. Stagnant air can quickly cause die-off in this species. This is a species that also seems to appreciate somewhat warmer conditions than some other isopods. I seem to see a surge of breeding in the warmer months of the year. I try not to let my bug room get over about 78 to 80 degrees though. In my experience, though it will eat other foods, this isopod species likes proteinaceous foods such as fish food pellets especially. There are some links in the description to some of the foods that I use. The clown isopod is not a terribly bold feeder. In fact, it's a fairly shy isopod in general, which tends to scurry away and hide when exposed. It will, however, eat quite readily at night. Breeding this species is not particularly difficult, although it can sometimes slow down or stop breeding after a large environmental change, such as shipping. It's not always the case, but it can happen. So now let's address whether Armadillidium klugei would function well in a bioactive vivarium as a cleanup crew species. I decided to test this out a little over a year ago. I put this species in my 40 gallon garter snake bioactive vivarium. Garter snakes, much like clown isopods, appreciate good ventilation, a thermal gradient, and a moisture gradient in the substrate. And I'd say that the experiment has been a success. The clown isopods appear to be breeding non-stop in the enclosure. I often find them congregating in the damp moss of the moist hide, and they really take care of snake skins very quickly. I would not consider this species a particularly high risk for harming vivarium inhabitants, as Armadillidium species rarely appear to uh, be a factor when there are problems of that nature. I would limit this species to vivariums with good ventilation and a definite moisture gradient though. I would also say that there are less expensive options for the kinds of setups that they're 
adapted for, such as any morph of Porcelionidase pruinosus. Maybe the only real downside that I've noticed to keeping this species in my garter snake vivarium is that they do occasionally drown themselves in the water dish. So I really try to be careful not to place the dish too near any cork bark or leaf litter or other decor that can lead these little beauties to an untimely aquatic demise. So now what about the clown isopod as a hobby species? Well, as I mentioned before, the coloration of this species, which is actually thought to be due to the mimicry of a spider that's native to its homeland, is hard to beat. If you want to be able to fully appreciate its color and pattern though, check out the exceptional macro footage that Richard over at the Tarantula Collective took of some of the specimens that I sent him. As a hobby isopod, the coloration of this species is really the best thing it has going for it, as it's a fairly shy species, like I said, and so it's not really a great choice for a display vivarium. And while it's not extremely difficult, it's not extremely easy either. To sum up, if this species were a little more bold, and maybe just a little bigger, so that its colors would be a little easier to appreciate, it would be a lot higher on my list of hobby species. That said, many people consider it a must-have isopod for any collection, and I do keep two localities of this species myself, and I really like it. This video is part of my playlist on isopod species profiles. If you haven't done so yet, check it out, and let me know in the comments which isopod species you'd like me to feature next. Thanks for watching today. I post videos every Tuesday and Friday, all on aquarium and vivarium pets with lots of isopod content. Feel free to rate, share, comment, and if you haven't already, subscribe. And then tap the bell so you don't miss my next video.